Apostle Erastus Snow was the next speaker. He said in substance, For about five weeks past, he had been visiting the saints in the stakes of Utah, Colorado, and Arizona. The people are generally in a peaceful, healthful, and prosperous condition, dwelling together in unity and love without anything to mar their peace, except some destruction from floods in the San Juan country, and some persecution from unprincipled persons in Apache County, Arizona. It has been instituted for political purposes. It will have the effect, probably, of establishing the righteous more firmly in the faith of the gospel, and weeding out the unfaithful. Many improvements have been made in the South, and the climate has apparently modified. Openings are plentiful for new settlers, and land can be obtained on easy terms. Grain, vegetables, and fruit of excellent quality are raised in abundance. At Woodruff especially more help is needed. The climate is unsurpassed by any other. At St. Joseph the United Order is conducted successfully according to stewardships. The speaker continued to give interesting details about the country occupied by the saints in the outlying settlements, and as a synopsis would not give an adequate idea of that portion of his discourse, the account is left for a verbatim report which will appear in due time. Taking up another line of remarks, he spoke on the opposition with which the saints have to contend. It is remarkable that one class of the human family prey upon another as wolves prey upon lambs. The spirit of the gospel causes men to be gentle, in accordance with the symbol by which the Holy Ghost was manifested when bestowed upon the Savior, being in the form of a dove. Christ was called the Lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. He exhibited the spirit of submission in his course on the earth, yet, as he said to his disciples, he had the power to call twelve legions of angels to his aid. But he knew that this would not be according to the Father's will. So has he commanded the Latter-day Saints to have faith in the overruling providence of God. The highest type of humility and patience is exhibited by the saints, and the greatest extremes of ferocity and hate are manifested by their enemies. And all these things are necessary for the carrying out of the purposes of the Almighty and the purifying of his people. Also, that those who choose evil rather than good may be eventually consigned to their place. We can afford to take persecution joyfully, seeing that we have come to an understanding of the object of our earthly existence. We should take to heart the injunction of Christ not to lay up treasures on earth, but prefer to seek heavenly riches. This does not imply that the people should be restrained from attending to the wants of the body, but the entire attention should not be absorbed by those things that pertain merely to temporalities. It is necessary to cultivate that love that looks charitably upon acts of others, and seeks to do good and no evil, exemplifying the characteristics of the dove and the lamb. The speaker continued to dwell for some time upon the necessity of industry, administering a settling rebuke to those inclined to idleness. He spoke of the increase of the children of the saints, and said that people must have to pass through trying ordeals on account of the wickedness of those who sought their destruction. But if so, the result would be ultimate salvation and glory to those who endured to the end and maintained their integrity to the truth.